This broadcast from IOF TV is brought to you by Tikator and Lumonite. And welcome back to Czechia for round two of the World Cup 2023. We uh, move on from the individual competition to show you the sprint relay live here from Cheskalipa. And it's going to be a really fast and furious one with loads of teams out there. We've got over 60 teams taking to the courses today. We've got lots of forkings, lots of gaffles, and it's going to be surely a fast and furious one this time. We've moved from the the kind of main old part of the town into a slightly newer part. There's lots of more kind of park style of orienteering, some larger buildings as well. And um, I think it could be on for a really good, exciting race. There's been some spectator races actually on the individual map um, this afternoon. So it means we've got lots of spectators here in the arena, lots where waving check flags to cheer on uh, all of the teams and they'll be hoping to see some fantastic performances out here today. The conditions are really, really nice. It's a bit windy, but um, it's great, great sprinting weather. So um, <clears throat> this is the old town where we were yesterday and kind of in the background is more of the terrain that the courses today are going to be visiting um it is really a quite a fun course quite a lot of uh we'll see quite a lot of uh athletes running in all sorts of different directions and i'm sure we're going to see some of our two favorite teams that we often see at the top of the podium doing well again today in terms of sweden and switzerland So let's have a look then at what is waiting for the teams. We've got 3.9 and 4.3 kilometers course as it's, it's a usual sprint relay format with women on legs one and four and men on legs two and three. And we're hoping to have a winning time of about 61 to 65 minutes. They actually have moved the, the starts five minutes earlier today because I think yesterday they were taking a little bit longer than they thought. So they wanted to give them a bit more time within the broadcast window as well. But Here's the course, and it starts off already with loads of forking. Mm, and it's a bit faster, that's my guess. So I'm not sure if they would have needed to change uh, starting time. But as you can see, many forkings. It's due to the fact that we have uh, two loops. So you can have more forkings than usual. Uh, you can see that we have start with a few short controls, then three, four, uh, maybe the longest leg of this course. Uh, then difference here from five to ten, uh, depending on if you're running the women's or the men's course. Uh, but otherwise, then you get together again, another route choice to 13. It's a common control, though. Then splitting up again the men's and the women's course, uh, getting back towards the arena again. Uh, at this point here, it's a bit of a change again. We have a forest control. Uh, I mean, it's not a difficult control. You just have to kind of accept that you have to do some... Yeah, I mean, there's a few trees in your way. Visibility is a bit different, so it might be uh, kind of a stress for the runners in the beginning. But as I said, uh, it's okay. It's doable. It's not a difficult control there at all. Uh, then you have the second loop with, of course, the other 
another kind of forking there. Uh, quite in interesting um, concept to have it like this. It, it creates a bit more of uh, action in the beginning. I hope that they will split up a lot and it will kind of... I don't think that the runners expect it to be like this, that you have so many forkings to the first and second control. No, they're going to really, really split up a lot and then come together at this third control and there's two different controls here to the fourth as well. Exactly, and it's uh, very important. If you have the one to the east here, uh, the one to the right in the picture, then you have to go around to the right as well. Um, otherwise, go to the left, of course, there are two different options. I think it's a bit better if you go all the way to the left. You can see it here if you have the control to the right then take the red route. It's the only one uh, you should take. So don't follow the others towards their control. And they come together then at control five. And then this one is an uh, interesting one with lots of barriers in the way. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to see where you can go because the barriers um, usually, I mean, if you just look at the map, you expect it I mean, it's it's something special with these artificial fences because you, in your head, you kind of think that you can continue to run on the road. So it has, you have to adapt to it. It's it's very strange when you run, uh, but it's it makes this route choice more interesting. Of course, I can see why they added the artificial fences. And we think the pink and the light blue ones in the pictures, so the ones that kind of go through the middle of the athletics track and do a bit of an S curve, are actually a little bit quicker. Yeah. A little exactly. bit shorter, anyway. But and then this is a school area as well. Yeah, it's a school area. And of course, I mean, you have to take a quick decision. I think it will depend very much on what the first runner is going to take. Um, maybe, I mean, we have seen before that they're splitting up quite a lot due to um, four kings. Of course, uh, runners are sensitive to that. They will double check if there's another option for them but I think when it's quite equal when it looks quite equal to the runners most of them will go the way the first one is going. Yeah, yeah. That's very true. This is one of the uh, legs that's just on the men's course uh, and this is the option going underneath the underpass and coming up. There's basically two options to get out of control 15 towards the underpass and then there's four different options with these artificial barriers around the church um, that really are going to split up a lot of the, the runners, I think, possibly, especially towards the later stages. Yeah, and here you late. can get a glimpse of this forest bit or more park forest uh, bit, so the visibility is very good. Uh, you shouldn't be afraid of that. No, absolutely not. No, the, the trees are, are really, really spread out, so um, it's not looking too bad at all. Uh, here's the start list. Of course, we have the two favourites, Sweden 1 and Switzerland, but some late changes on the Swedish team. Tova Alexanderson out. She says there's a small injury affected by kind of running on the hard surfaces, although there's not many hard surfaces, really. It's quite a lot more park orienteering here. So she's replaced by Emma Biesmo. There's also some illness in other parts of the Swedish camp. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that um, a little bit later. Uh, Switzerland with um, a very, very strong team. And then, as always, when it comes to um, the sprint relay, we're going to be often talking about the battle for third. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we had this uh, uh, Denmark a few years ago battling for the victory. I don't think they're strong enough today. But uh, as you said, in my expectation, I think we have Switzerland and Sweden as usual uh, in, in fighting for the gold medal. And then a very tight race for the third position. It could be, I mean, uh, it's a World Cup race. We have second teams for Sweden and Switzerland and for other nations as well. We've seen that before, that they can perform well. They could be in the fight for the third position, but we also have a very strong Czech team where Jakub Glonek, for example, yesterday had a great run until he did a big mistake in the garden. Yeah. Uh, one, <laughs> one of the runners who did a big mistake there. Yeah, all of their team were top 10, apart from Jakub Glonek. Exactly, so very, very strong team from yeah. Czech Republic. I think for me, maybe the ones with the biggest chance for this bronze medal. 
Yeah. Place. Even, might be even fighting for the first. We will see. Well, Van La Hayu was a late replacement for Inka Nermanen, who's out with illness, so she takes the first leg for the Finnish team. Maria Lausen is uh, the first leg for the Norwegian team. Uh, onto the Swiss team, that's Simone Absol, Joey Haddon, Matthias Kibbert, and Eleanor Ross. And Sarah Hagstrom leads out the Swedish team with Jonathan Gustafsson, Gustav Bergman, and Emma Biesmo. For me, interesting is that both Switzerland and Sweden, in my opinion, have the strongest runner on the first leg. So they really want to, I mean, they want to impress the others. They want to show that they can perform well. They want to be in top after the first leg and, and go from there. And they want to try and make a gap a few seconds ago. Start. They are off. <laughs> the arena just saying start. And we have 60 women all off onto this World Cup sprint relay. And they head straight away out of this arena, out of this parkland. And they're going to head up the slope. Here they come. They're going to head up the slope. And now we're going to watch for them splitting up because there's four different options here. And that's very unusual when you've got a sprint relay. Normally there's just two options, two for the women, two for the men. And you can see, yes, you can see Venla Hayu to the right going one way. Here's Simona Abersold going another way, followed very, very closely by uh, Sarah Hagstrom, Grace Malloy as well. There is Basse, a lot of the top teams up towards the front, as we might expect. And you can see them splitting up as well. And it's quite tricky here in this first bit. You have this house and then you have many fences. You also have artificial fences added to those ones. So you have to be very careful where you can uh, kind of enter or exit in a small area towards the next control. Yeah, you can see there's a tape just that they're all about to run the, the other side of as well. So it makes it really interesting. Here are all the options yeah. then. C and D are the more southerly ones. It's hard to see the, the passages here when yeah. you have so many dots and uh, so much text, but uh, many artificial fences. Can't really see them here. But of course, this leads to the fact that it's more, even more convenient if you can operate from the lead. So I think it's uh, a good thing for Switzerland and Sweden to put strong runners on the first leg so they don't get into this nerve, into a nervous situation where you have many runners around you. You want to operate from, from, yeah, from the lead, basically. Okay, so they're coming into control number three. And there we go, Sweden and Switzerland in different places, and they split up then. Uh, they do have different controls, Sarah Hagstrom and Simona Abersol. We know they've got different controls, so they're going in the two different options, both doing their own orienteering, as most of the rest of the pack goes the same way then. Yeah, but so they should the They, they should not all know. go there. Uh, at, at least a few should head to the other, into the other direction, uh, as Simona Abersol uh, did. And this is like a good thing about being at the front at the start. Exactly. You know, that's that you are you are making your own. You're more likely to make your own. That's decision. what I was talking about. I mean, it, first of all, it's avoiding some, a few stressful situations. But of course, it's easier to make your own decision when you have no one else who can kind of affect your decision. You can see it here. If yeah. you have the one more, if you have the F control, then it's good to go the way Simon Abersol did. Uh, you can go there and then either all the way around the forbidden area or just head south directly uh, past control 14. I think it's a bit faster if you go all the way around, so good decision for Abersol. And if you have E, then you have to go the way uh, Sander Hagström is going. You have to be careful here in order to stay uh, on the passage and not to run on the road because it's uh, yeah forbidden area there. So now they head underneath the underpass and will climb, take a left and climb up again to control number four. And at this point, you can see some of the runners trying to jostle for places there, I think. Mm, definitely. I mean, it's a long, it's, for a sprint relay, it's a very long leg. You have a lot, you have a lot of time to kind of uh, read ahead. You have a lot of time to get a good position in this group here. So of course, you want to need you're going to use that. You can see New Zealand is actually taking one uh, the other option if you have to go to the F control, which I think is a little bit slower. So I think we'll meet up again at control number five, and here is Sarah Hagstrom. This is uh, control number five. 
here. Uh, oh, and have Simone Abersol. Abersol just ahead. So if you execute those route choices correctly, they're pretty even then. And the two have got a gap. That's pretty big gap, as we might expect. That looks like the British team and the Finnish team in there as well. Maybe the Ukrainians too. And I think distance-wise, the two different options, they were about 10 meters uh, away from each other, so quite similar. Here we go, the second Ukrainian team, New Zealand team there as well. Don't forget, we've got some nations have got four teams in this one which makes it really interesting. So let's have a replay then from the beginning. Yeah, and you can, as we said, I mean, the first of all, first there were just two forked controls in the common third one, and then uh, almost everyone following on the southern option there, uh, only New Zealand and Switzerland uh, from the uh, teams with the GPS device here. And the other one, New Zealand here, I don't think it's, I think it's better to go the way Simon Abersol did. Yeah, I agree slightly short you don't have to see that little chicane and then there's three there's a couple of forked controls not three <laughs> there definitely won't be three a couple of forked controls in here as well before they're heading out to uh controls nine and ten and again we have a couple of fences there it's hard to see uh just under all the dots and all the text there but uh, it's quite a tricky area actually you have to be careful you have to uh, run proactively in order to see everything. But this is Simone Abersold then heading from eight to nine. Nine, again, there's a few controls just in this parkland, all on kind of bushes or thickets that's uh, common for everybody. Yeah, and after this quite tricky bit with many short controls from five to eight, you get a bit more time. Nine, ten is rather easy, 11 as well. And then you get this route choice options from 11 to 12. So you could spot just ahead there, the camera runner did a really good job of showing us that Sara Hagström is ahead slightly of Simona Abersold there. I don't know if you can see her just in the kind of, there you go, there she is coming out of that control, going to 11, just slightly ahead. And I think as we might expect, these two teams have got a big gap. No bigger surprise. Maybe the strongest runners in the field, seen, yeah, of course, seen uh, also compared to the last leg then. You can see now there's this rude choice leg from 11 to 12. And this again is a common leg, and it's quite interesting to see. Yeah, you can see that they split it up on different yeah. route choices. Abersold running all the way around. Uh, Hagström's gonna run an S-shaped, uh, most probably S-shaped form. I think it's good to go on the S-shaped actually. Yeah, it, depending I think it on is the, which too. which S form you're gonna run, of course. So she should go right here. No, she's no, not. She she's left gonna go and then right. Yeah. There's, but there's three different S shapes you can run through. But this. I think and she's going to go. She's got so the least, the least favourable one, to be honest, which is okay because uh, Switzerland's is also a bit longer. You should have gone through the playing fields. I there. think it's quite okay to go here as well. And again, once once one person has made that decision, you can see the rest of the the rest of the runners all kind of going that same way. So here is the S bend. So she turns right here and goes between these school buildings. She go underneath uh, a little underpass that connects all these school buildings. And we do have a camera at the next control. This is a common leg here. Uh, so we'll see who has managed to do this one the best. I think that's actually Grace Malloy just going underneath there uh, on the first leg for the British team. I think you're right. We could also see Hagström just uh disappearing behind the building. Here we uh, go. Was a little bit faster, the option of Simona Abersold. Yeah. They're almost together again. And then we've got another section of forking just coming up here. And now they change as well. I've lost track of the forking to figure out if they have the same. No, they've definitely got different forkings here. And they're splitting up as well. So Grace Malloy into third place then. And next up then Lahayu. We've also got the Spanish team, Norwegians, the Ukrainian team as well. Doing well, the Danish team. 
this is a group of and then we have the French team. We have another Danish team, the New Zealand team, Penelope Salmon on the first leg. She she took the right route choice over to control number four. And you can see then the forkings after this control, splitting up the runners. And actually a lot going in that same way. Is anybody going straight on and underneath? Yes, a few people as one of the Danish teams, I think. But we're back with uh, the leader, I think this is. This is Sarah Hagstrom. Very hard to say because it's it is hard up. to say, yeah. So she's just coming round to her control number 14 before going back underneath the underpass. And then she'll be at the arena very, very shortly again. Uh, she was in the lead. Ah. Here's the episode. Yeah, that's a common control there, the 14th. But certainly one of the runners has to go up to a different control 15. They have four different forkings here. You can see that Sweden has L there, so yes, she has to go up to 15. Uh, Abersold can pass. But she's still got to go her to her control. Yeah, you can just exactly. see 15K there. That's just You can just see it see coming it into picture now. There we go. Maybe slightly faster with the K option because you don't have to take the steps uh, in the downhill out from control L. Yeah, now she is ahead. And there we go, there's the gap. So I don't think there's any any kind of mistakes there from Sala Hogstrom. It's just the forking being slightly different. And they've still got a couple more forked controls as well to come. So a bit of climbing and then descending again into the parkland. Now they enter this uh, park uh, area just beside the finish, beside the runover. And I think they'd have been able to guess they'd have a, a few controls in this part with an arena passage as well there. That's the 16th. And don't forget, they've still got another small loop to go after the arena passage. It's only very, very short. They're going to head straight into the uh, tricky area that they started in. But we wait at the arena passage then here for these two athletes to come through the two leading teams, there is Sweden. And the controller's actually just kind of in the foreground. There it is. Um, you can see that Simona Abersold coming through it with a lead. The lead is, oh, it's actually grown a bit bigger, I think. The lead is eight seconds then. So Simona Abersold just reading her map really carefully as she goes through this passage. She has to turn over the map to get part two. And she, both runners just being really careful because they're going to head back into the same part of the map that they were in beforehand. And there's a different kind of sections here. Here's Grace Malloy for the British team. You can see that she's turning her map over as well. The gap is uh, just under 30 seconds from second to third. It's quite a big gap, but still a good start for Grace Malloy. Uh, you can see that uh, she opened a gap as well compared to the fourth runners or the chasing runners. That's another of the Swedish teams. And we have a Danish team as well. So uh, Wilma von Kruisen for Sweden four. Hedvig Udesen for... Denmark and now we have a whole load of teams there Finland Poland uh, Spain are in there another Danish team uh, I think it's maybe a Hungarian team maybe as well and another couple of uh, Swedish teams too so big gap to about a minute down with a whole big group of runners A bit of a gap, and then the next team's down. There's a French team, Isia Basse. A bit further down than we might expect. We also have the Latvian team in there as well, number 10. That's uh, it is Sandra Gosberger starting for them. 
Have we seen the leading Czech team? I think we must have done through there as well. Another of the uh, Finnish team, Spanish teams. And here's Czech one, Denise Kosova. That is a big loss. time loss there. That's an, that is a surprise. We had the Czechs on for uh, potential bronze medal contenders, and they are a long way down there. So we catch up then at the church. The leading teams have done the second round of four kings in that first area. So this is control number 22 here, and they are back together. Mm -hmm. So hard to say how fast the different four kings are. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know if it was a mistake or if it was just uh, due to the different options they had in the beginning of this second loop, this second very short loop. Yeah, so the two leaders through pretty much together, and then we're waiting at the next, at this uh, 22nd control for the third place team. It was Grace Malloy for the British team, it still is. And she is about the same amount of time down, again with a little bit of a gap. But then we also know that uh, Abyssal lost a few seconds, so maybe as well Malloy compared to Hagström. Yeah, now here's the rest, and they're going to be 15 plus seconds behind third place. A big group here. And now we have the leaders then going towards the last couple of controls. Here we go. Here's the second to last control, and the last control coming up. So, plain sailing for the two favourite teams, for Sweden and for Switzerland. Sara Hagström and Simone Abersold, job done for them. And they are probably the team's strongest runners. They've got a gap on the rest of the field. So they're going to have, and there's a bit of a sprint out here. Looks like uh, Sara Hagström is leading this one. Just going to hand over to Jonathan Gustafsson. And Simone Abersold handing over to Joey Haddon. So two in very, very quick runners. Very, very um, kind of got good, good, just flat speed, and they're going to go out a second apart. And you can see what uh, good, great speed uh, Hagstrom had on the last meters, even though she was out for about 16 minutes and a half minutes before. Okay. Really makes a difference compared to other teams who may, might lose a few seconds in the very end. So Grace Malloy then into third place here. She has had a great run. Uh, she's been spending most of this year studying in the States, uh, doing track and field, not done much uh, orienteering really, but handing over back to uh, Ralph Street. And I wonder what she said yeah. there uh, over to Ralph. Um, so 45 seconds down. Wasn't very much of information. Yeah, but she really yelled out. something there. <laughs> now Sweden four into four. New Zealand's there, Poland's there, Denmark is there. We have Finland here, we have, I think, the second Swedish team as well in there. We have Ukraine and the whole of runners changing over now, about a minute down. Still waiting for the Czech Republic. Here's Norway second team. Swiss third team. This is the Swiss second team as well. Here's the Czech team, yeah, but, but it's, it's not the Czech first one team. It is. Let me just find out which team it is. It's Barbara Matikova for Czech four. There's the third Norwegian team. This is Sweden. Oh, stopping there. And we're about to head on the big route choice. Uh, let me just check which route choice they've got. They've not got the same, and I think Joey Haddon should have gone the other way. Most probably, yes. Another Italian team over. So there we go. We can see both of them. This is so. This is the northern route, or the northern and eastern route for these two uh, runners. And now I think Joey Haddon here needs to stay kind of close to. Yeah, stay very, very close to uh, the road here. Let's kind of try and see which way they're going to go, because if they both go immediately south from there, I think they could be back even Stevens.
so we can't tell where Sweden have gone. We just think their GPS is not working, so that is not great, obviously. Um, so we can't tell which way they've gone, so maybe we'll see when they come together into the control what has gone on with those two leaders. And again, you can see now they really are just, uh, switching it up. You've got, l in fact, quite a lot of teams with F going that other way in that chasing group, that kind of fourth place down. Yeah, it's the same we have seen in the first leg with, for the women's. Most of the teams going to the south. Uh, Haldorn, yeah, not the best route choice, but at least he's going straight down. Yeah, it's quite a tough route choice with um, mm -hmm. with with having these sections of underpass that you can only go a certain way. But there's he Gustafsson. On. Let's see how big the gap is. Yes, we're waiting. Here he goes. Hadon lost about 10 seconds on this route. I think you're right. So the, those route choice, that route choice from three to four is really, really crucial. This is control five. Now Interesting we now look. to see how fast the uh, Raul Street is on this first bit, the winner from yesterday. Yeah, he was about 45 seconds down. And we'll just keep that time ticking on in the corner. As we can see, these, these kind of forked controls, the men have a little bit further than the women here. Here's a chasing group. Here's Denmark. Uh, not sure where the... British team is yet. Maybe coming in from the other direction. Yeah, there, there we go. So lost a few seconds there. Lost about eight seconds, I think. And yeah, especially compared to the other teams, I think he lost time. Uh, but they are not there yeah, yet. They have, well. to, of course, they, they have to go to, to the other control. Yeah. And Simon Imark is in there. We also have the Spanish team. Swedish fourth team. Swedish fourth team. Yeah, we had a lot of changes in all the Swedish teams um, due to some illness in the camp. Quite big gaps already here in the beginning. Uh, one and a half minutes down to position 12. Also a little bit due to the fact that we had the strongest runners for the two strongest teams on the first leg. Yeah. I think so. But in, even then, like spread, spreading out a little bit in the in this part as well. Here we are just we south of control three. They had, the men had a little bit of a longer loop here compared to the women. You can see that Switzerland and Sweden now together again. see it here uh, the women they didn't have six seven and eight a little bit of a shorter option and remember we've not got Sweden's GPS yeah, the good thing with the sprint relay is that the GPS malfunction is maybe just for 10 minutes because yeah. then we have the next round around exactly Exactly, it's so quick. We'll, I think we'll be able to catch them up again by control 10. Yeah. And then we'll have that route choice again from 12 to 13. So here's Hadorn, there is Gustafsson, yep, just there behind. Is. I've got one controlled punch around here, and then another common leg. Okay, Jerry Hadorn, yep, going one way, and it looks like yeah, Gustafsson going the other way. The same situation, Almost but the other, the way, other round. way around. Yeah. And then we'll see which way there's like three different varieties of S-shaped curve that you can run uh, if you go Joe Hadorn's way. And I think he's going to go, yeah, he's going to go the same way as Sada Hagstrom.
So you can see Gustafsson is behind the fence there. It's got to go a little bit further and then do a 180 degree turn and come back the other way. And the control we're after is between these two school blocks. Remember, Jerry Hadorn was maybe three or four meters ahead. And he will still be ahead. Oh, it's pretty, pretty equal there between these two runners. And then again, they're going to go to a different set of four kings. Joey Haddon goes straight on. So too does Jonathan Gustafsson. Here's the chasing group. A lot of them going outside this fence all the way around. It's quite a easy choice to, to make, I think, and gives you a lot of time to plan ahead on these route choices. You can see that there's a, a couple of longer route choice controls coming up. So a lot of the athletes may be choosing to do that. In fact, some even cutting up as well. Here is uh, Ralph Street, who we didn't see in that kind of pack, that group. And he's probably about running maybe about the same pace, maybe a couple of seconds slower than the two leaders. But still under that one minute mark. Here's the next runner. Still very good race for Denmark. Yep, Andreas Bock Bjornsson, who uh, I think had a bit of a meh yesterday, finishing 105th, but doing a much better job uh, this time. We've also Very got much better, yes, indeed. Much, much better. Eduardo Gilmarcos is into uh, the next place, into fourth place. Sorry, fifth place, I think. And now a lot of athletes going this same way. do have a forking on this next control. Some people should go straight on, as they have done. And once people start going both different ways, then you start to, uh, you know, a lot of athletes making their own decisions. There's a French team. We've also got uh, Switzerland too, Ricardo Rankan in there as well. And yeah. now Gustafsson got ahead. Exactly. Just slightly ahead. They've already done 14 and 15, I think. Yeah, so yeah. you can see that this route choice is different compared to the women's course as well. Mm. We didn't have uh, the 15th control up there. And I think this is slightly strange because the the really thick purple line with the gate through it really draws the eye <laughs> um, when you're looking at that as a route choice. So uh, I, think I think it's, it's quite, quite an okay quite route actually yeah. to take. Yeah. Uh, you can see Denmark running there as, right now. Then you can even cut the corner a little bit over the uh, meadow there. Field, open field, just there. Yeah, it's a good option. So very soon uh, we'll get see Switzerland at the Arena Passage and uh, most probably Sweden as well. Yep, exactly. It was uh, Sweden just ahead, but these two runners so closely matched here. Jonathan Gustafsson was seventh uh, yesterday. Joey Haddon, uh, one of those who made mistakes uh, out in the really tricky parts, he was in 34th. But we know his flat speed is incredibly strong, so these two runners quite well matched. And then they're going to hand over to Gustav Bergman and Matthias Kibbert, of course, two runners as well who know each other very well. Gustav Bergman got uh, slightly the better of Matthias Kibbert yesterday, though. OK, here's Jonathan Gustafsson. Oh, so, and where is uh, Hadon? I think I can see... Yeah, somebody. lost a yeah. few meters here. Has definitely lost a few. Obviously can't tell if that was due to some of the route choices maybe back through to the parkland. But anyway, we have lead, we have Sweden through. Nine seconds ahead of Switzerland. And it 
still all to play for as they go into this last little loop back into these two first forks controls. There's Denmark. Andreas Bok Bjornesson in, and here we have another chasing group here. Denmark was about 108 behind the last TV control. I think that's Isaac von Krizenfwana in closely there. Here's uh, Ralph Street doing the map change, map flip as it as it were, and back out into the arena, maintaining that third place. Oh, the Bjørnsson lost about 10 seconds. Yeah, he was a lot closer uh, to the street. And then there's that chasing group, about a minute and a half behind Sweden. Sweden 2 with Isaac von Krusenfreunde have moved up through uh, the Sweden, rankings. Sweden. It's not Sweden. Yeah, it is Sweden 2 and Sweden 4. I think it was so... Oh, Sweden 3, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> because uh, Oscar and but Sweden 2 was there as well with Oscar and Rien. So there are many Swedish teams. Many, <laughs> it's many Swedish very teams. easy to get confused there. Okay, we're waiting then at the church. So Ooh, this is Switzerland. Doing, yeah, it is. Did we miss Sweden, maybe? No. No, we didn't. No, we did not. It's such a back and forth yeah. from every TV control to the next one. And another group of runners pass through. If we have the two leaders, then we have the British team, then it's so one chasing group, this is the next course, chasing group. Of course, the graphics here uh, related to the next control, we just see, seen this one this here. One, yep, exactly. So the two leaders through, they've changed orders again. Obviously, it's not until the last run has been through that we have uh, all of the results and all of the four kings kind of playing out. And here is Joey Hadorn. Mm. Got to punch this control first and then heading down past one of the statues, the monuments, into the second to last control. And looks like he's still in a leading position here. Hello. Let's wait here. There is uh, Ralph Street. Yes, time about a minute behind. Ooh, and there we have Denmark as Denmark's well, getting closer. Here. Yeah, this is really strong. Yeah, doing a great race here, uh, Andreas Bok Bjornsson. So maybe a small mistake of Gustafsson uh, in the beginning of the second loop. Just a few seconds. So we have the exchange then. That was the exchange. So <laughs> Joey Haddon handing over to Matthias Kibbert and Jonathan Gustafsson handing over to Gustav Bergman. Really, really close there. Super close. Here's Johnny Crickmore on uh, leg three for the British team. So we wait, is it going to be Denmark or Great Britain to change over into third place? It's a bit of a gap now here and Johnny Crickmore is going to know exactly what that gap is. Here's Ralph Street though and you can see the Danish team are just behind. So here's third and fourth. And uh, Ralph Street and Andreas Bokbjornsson, very close here. And going to hand over to Johnny Crickmore and to a late replacement for Sir Antron Erdem, Jeppe Edvardsson. There we go. Hard to say how unexpected it was for Edvardsson because Sir Antron Erdem didn't run yesterday either. Yeah, he's got some illness, I think. Here we have Sweden 2 and Sweden 3, I think, we'll see as well. Czechia 4. Yeah, they're the best Czech team. 
halfway through this relay after 33 minutes of running. Hungary handing over. There's the Swedish fourth team. So four teams in the top 15 for Sweden. And this is their first team. This is Gustav Bergman, and he has gone to the north. I'm mm -hmm. just going to check and see. He's got the E control, so he should have gone the other way. And I don't know where Matthias Kibert is. In fact, they've both gone this way, and I think that's going to be advantage to Matthias Kibert because he has got F. Depends on what they're doing it here. It does depend on what they're doing yeah, here. That looks good. Kibert, I think, will go all the way around. Yeah, and Gustav Bergman goes directly south and round. It's a big, a big square cemetery. Cemetery is that big green out of bounds on the map, and they have split up. So, doing their own orienteering, and they've got a clear roll here, keeping it clean. So there is third and fourth, and the fifth and sixth teams are. Oh no, I think that's. And they're splitting up here on different route choices. You can see it here, Denmark, yeah. then Sweden, three, There's Sweden, Kasper two. There's Foster. I think we've got some teams who are kind of on a different leg or yeah. did a different loop I mean, loop they are on the group. second loop yeah. of the second leg. You can see to the right we have this church. We've seen uh, on the second loop of the second leg uh, the last TV control. Here's Kibbutz. And now let's see how big is the gap compared with Gustav Berryman. Uh, it was on the wrong route, uh, slightly slower. I think it was about 10 seconds on the earlier uh, legs when we compared Hadorn to Gustafsson. This is growing though. Mm, here and it I'm is. sure that Matthias Kibbertz will have seen when Gustav Bergman went a different way. That was his opportunity to put his foot on the gas and lift the speed. Yeah, and of course. To try and get a gap. Right? He doesn't really know how big the difference is in the forking. Uh, but when he's alone now at this common control, at uh, this control, I'm quite sure that he's confident to be in the lead. So ah. Sweden, oh, just missing the gaps there. Quite easy to miss that yeah. one. Lots of like kind of playground equipment, lots of kind of tapes. The organizers, I think, have done a really good job of taping a lot of the hedges. <laughs> yeah. There's wonder how many of kilometers yeah. of uh, tape is out there. <laughs> Lo loads, certainly. Uh, and you've got to have some good scent there as well. So you can just see how all the runners are split up onto those different four kings again. Uh, Joey so Hannon, a, a close battle between you and Jonathan Gustafsson from Sweden all the way through second leg. How did you experience it? Yeah, exactly. I felt we had this uh, clear lead over some of the rest teams. And yeah, we run basically all together. Of course, the forking made it quite interesting. I was a lot alone. And as well, in the end, suddenly I was in front, even I was uh, behind some seconds in the run over. But yeah, it was just a controlled race uh, on the second leg, which our team was, has needed. And the chances for a Swiss win today, what do you think they are? Yeah, of course, uh, we are always aiming for the victory, but uh, Sweden is always having a strong team. Even now, today, Tuve is missing out. I think it will be a close battle, but I'm uh, looking forward to look now the my two teammates to perform. Thank you. Thank you. Cherry had on calls for confidence there back towards some of the one of the leading teams. Yeah. That's Tim Robertson there. Just he has on. to do the loop yeah. still. He does indeed. And it's really oh hello. Oh no, yeah, they have one to, to go get out there control. again. <laughs> it's quite exciting when you have all of those runners going different directions, and even when there's there's runners from much later on as well that you're, you're still seeing around the course, yeah. uh, you've got to really keep your focus. But as a runner, it's it's very tricky because when when you read the map while running and you go around the corner, you have to be very careful in order to not uh, bump, to bump into anyone else. 
uh, makes it hard to focus on the map reading while running because you have to. There's one more moment getting into it, one more thing to think about uh, in the orienteering bit. So this tail is 30 seconds then, and um, I think this, th could this be one of the decisive points of this relay? Well, it could be. <laughs> of course it could be. It's hard to say. Uh, it's 20 seconds. It's quite, it's quite a lot for a sprint relay. Uh, well, especially when we know that, I mean, the, the men usually have the speed in for the men orienteers on the third leg. It doesn't, there's no big difference. So I don't expect it to grow. Uh, very much here on the next in the next few minutes. If there is a difference in strength, then as I think it will show uh, be shown on the very last loop, in the last two or three minutes. But we know Matthias Kibbert has such great strength yeah, from those world championships. But I mean, uh, He's still got it. Gustav Benjamin was second yesterday. He has a good speed as well. Uh, if there is, as I said, if there is a difference in the physics, I, I think it's it's on the very last bit you will really see it. So, looking at the tracking, is that Sweden 2 who's gone ahead of the Brit... Oh no, just just on the tails of the British team. Sweden 2 is uh, Martin Regborn. Mm -hmm. I can also see that the keyboard is running this S shape you were talking about, just between uh, those fields. Yeah, and we can see, I was going to say, yeah, we're going to yeah. be <laughs> able to see the two of them in the same shot. We will, uh, but Gustav Bowman still has to kind of do a little bit of an out and back around the fence. So it is advantage to Switzerland. And the gap, uh, it was about 20 seconds at the last TV control. So let's see now if it's paying off this route for Kibbutz. <laughs> and had a bit of bad direction due to the map reading there towards the control. So let's, let's see, the time is ticking. It was 20 seconds before. How yeah. much is it now? Will it have grown? I feel it might have done. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Here's Sweden. Maybe about three or four seconds. Be even a bit more. Yeah, eight seconds. And here are the chasers. I think we've got a Swedish team there. I think in third there, the blue shorts, white top is Johnny Crickmore. So they've gone all the way around here. To control 13, they've got to go up these steps too. So that's Martin Regborn there, and that is uh, Sweden 3, August Molain as well. There's Johnny Crickmore, but that's still the third place nation. So three Swedish teams together. What? One after another. Then the British team, 124 down, and then let's have a gap because the Danish team were very, very close to the British team, but now they've been overtaken by Norway and Kasper Fossa on the third leg. Oh, the Czech team has caught way up there. Mm. Who's, who's that in third leg on the Czech team? Thomas Krivda. Thomas Krivda, of course. He was fifth yesterday. So that Czech first team now pulled up into so a top 10 position. Only about half a minute to the medal position. I mean, only. It's yeah. still half a minute, but if you compare it to what it was earlier. So Finland a bit down. That's Alexi Niemi. They've got Maya Sienoya on the last leg. We've got uh, the seventh team. That's the Estonian team. We've got the second Swiss team there. The fourth Swedish team. Actually, Krifta is about 15 seconds faster than Kibbutz on this leg so far. Wow, that's incredible stuff. He's really made an impact on that Czech team, I think. Here is uh, Regborn for Sweden 2. And this is the third place team, I expect. Although they may well have taken different route choices. He's going through the kind of cross, like through that fence, the big purple line. 
And the gap is more than 30 uh, seconds it's now. It's definitely more than 30 seconds. It's almost 40, I would say. Yeah, so maybe you're right. Maybe it's not only the technique, maybe it's also the physical aspect here, making a difference between Kibbutz and uh, Berryman. Uh, so it's still behind Sweden too, as you can see there. And then you've got the other Swedish teams, the British teams still to come. You can see that they're going to be heading through that gap in the wall and down underneath the underpass as well. Here's the leader though, here's Matthias Kibbert. And when that route choice opened up between three and four, he just put his foot on the gas. He is so physically strong and physically fast and able to keep up with all this orienteering with ease. And he's managed to get a significant gap over Sweden. And this could be the making of a great performance for the Swiss team. Goes through on this arena passage and we're going to count the time, take an eye on the clock. Here's the uh, third Swedish team. You can see the British team just ahead there as well. So this is uh, four and five. Still got to come down into this park and do the arena passage. And uh, from the GPS, we expected it to be about 40 seconds. Let's see if it has been growing even more. That's about 45 seconds. Yeah, you said it, 45 quite seconds. Quite a lot. But is it on? Oh, no, it's more. It's definitely more. Yeah, if because it's they take, here it no, is. No, they did take uh, it on that last control. 46. It was more than 45. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, by one second. <laughs> and Gustav Bergman goes to do the last little loop. He's going to be back into the arena very, very shortly. And while it's still pretty interesting later on in the race. There's uh, Norway and Czechia. Yeah. That's very exciting. And um, New Zealand and Sweden. Uh, uh, sorry, Spain still in there. This is Martin Reg, one for Sweden, two. And he's managed to pull away, catch up and pull away from the others. He's having a really cracking run. He was uh, disqualified. I think he did he punch the wrong first control, I yes, think. He Otherwise, did. he would have been third. Punched so the women's control. He did indeed. So I think after a little bit of a revenge, and then it's more gaps growing further down. Let's see how he flipped the map to the second loop. And let's have a look at this chasing group then who are catching right. Heikela. Uh, we have Krivda, we have Fossa. See some of them there. So Finland and Norway through there. Here's Czechia. We also uh, have Tim Robertson coming as well. You can see him in there as well as another of the Swiss teams and I think uh, Danish team too. And I mean the gap for the Czech team to the bronze medal position. It was about half a minute before. It's only 15 seconds now. So they're getting closer and closer and uh, they have uh, there is a Janosikova on the last leg, a very strong sprint runner. So this is the 23rd control for Matthias Kibbert. He's got uh, one, two, three more controls to go. And we look back to the control previously to see Gustav Bergman into second place. And the gap is growing again just by a few seconds. But we can follow the leading team then, I think, into this arena. Would have been interesting to see the jump of the camera person. <laughs> so here he is. And could this be a decisive moment for Switzerland as Matthias Kibbert is going to hand over to Eleanor Ross for the last leg. Who's just staring to see her incoming run. And look at this. He is really there. taking it serious. He wants to win every second he can. He really, really does. And Eleanor Ross heads out for the last leg for Team Switzerland. And we wait then here at the arena for Team Sweden. Emma Biesmo has been promoted to the first team after. Tova Alexanderson's being rested with some uh, kind of inj small injury problems. Let's count the seconds up. It's going to be more than 45 seconds. As the Czech fans cheer, Wojtek Kral through the arena passage. Here we go. Here's Sweden. 
And you can see from our position, you can see Matthias Kibbutz still waiting with the readout of his sport tent uh, in order to see how big the gap is between Switzerland <laughs> and Sweden. Yeah, he's really keen to see what that gap is and it's going to be... It's going to be more than it's a minute or almost a minute. I think it, they still took the, the punch at the last control. Maybe, yeah, but this is, the exchange. Oh, this is the exchange. So it's exactly a minute. Exactly a minute. Wow. It was one second between the first two teams after leg one and after leg two. The two teams took one second apart, different ways each time. And after leg three, it's one whole minute. And that is a big, big gap. Yeah, very impressive run by Kibbutz. Didn't see any mistakes on the route choices and great speed. Usually a very good combination. Yeah, let's look for Martin Regborn here then in for Sweden too. And the gap is going to be over a minute and a half. And over then to Alvis Gap 135. Here is... Uh, uh, oh, now there's a group. This is a big group here because the chasers check and Norway have caught up here. But it's Finland. Finland 2 is going to change it over into the third place nation. Uh, so Finland 2, we have uh, Sweden, Norway, Great Britain, Czech and another Swiss team all there together. And that means that there is a big old group of about seven teams going off together. That's very exciting. But they're half a minute behind uh, Sweden 2, which actually, I mean, if you look nation-wise for the top three, uh, we can count them out. So then it's definitely a fight for the bronze. Here's Denmark handing over. Another the Polish team there, another Swiss team, Switzerland 2. Natalia Gempeler, I think, on the last leg for Switzerland 2. And we can head back then towards the leaders. Here's Eleanor Ross, and she's gone. Uh, I think this is the to southern the south, route. Yeah. Just check which one she's got. She has got E, so she's done the right route choice there, I think. What the, oh, what the course planners were expecting. And you can see behind. There's Piesmo. And she's at got that, the other so no. control, I'm pretty yeah. sure. So that's what we want to see. The F control. You can see it here. F for Sweden. E for Switzerland. And of course, that's a 30 second gap. It was one minute at the uh, exchange. So it looks about the same. I think we'll get to see how you see Elena Roos on the way to the next control, very soon to the next TV control then. So Jana Shikova in oh, third, in third place. Now. Yes, a, an aggressive start. Uh, there's Norway as well, uh, New Zealand. It looks like Laura Robertson. Must have been a big mistake of one of the Swedish teams, right? Because they were half a minute uh, ahead on position three. <laughs> Yeah, we're missing a team through here. So maybe one of them just didn't register. I, no, I think we saw um, on the GPS, Sweden 2 was a bit ahead. Yeah, must have been like There's that because they were through. about half a minute ahead of the group. Yeah. Here's Denmark. And France. France. Uh, Ida Egerberg Christensen, Christensen on the last leg for Denmark was six yesterday. And there you can see how they split up. Oh, but is there a mistake for Switzerland? Or no, she's going around there to control, to next control. Here she is. It's a lot of in and out into this. Uh, Fancy areas, <laughs> yeah, fancy areas, <laughs> fenced areas. Huh? Yeah, it's quite easy to get quite disorientated. Everything comes at you really, really quickly, right?
Hard to focus with a camera in your face. But for Elinor Ross in this position as, oh, this is a minute and 23 now mm. down. So Emma Biesmo losing time here. Um, you know, she can afford to just, uh, Eleanor Ross can afford to be a little bit careful, can't she? Yeah, I mean, she has. She knows that she has about a minute to play with. Uh, I think she expects it to be about 45, 50 seconds, but still, that's a massive lead uh, in a sprint race. So, uh, and also if you compare her to Emma Biesmo, it's not really that, uh, I mean, it's not her against Tove Alexanderson. So she knows that they're, but they have about the same speed. So if she doesn't do any bigger mistakes, she should be in the lead, even in the finish. So Jana Shikova through there, uh, Mary Katani for Finland. It's Finland two actually. Yeah, but we can and see now that Sunason actually lost uh, about 10 seconds compared to Jana Shikova from the changeover. So they get closer. Check team. She's got closer to second place than to Emma Biesmo as well. Yeah, but Emma Biesmo lost about 25 seconds compared to Switzerland. So. seems to create a, a big gap here to Sweden on the third leg. Uh, how do you experience the leg yourself? Yeah, at the beginning it was quite hectic with uh, many uh, yeah, changes from running. Uh, and then I was all alone and uh, I took the time to find some good route. It was a really difficult course, so you had to yeah, back out sometimes really behind of the control. So there were many traps, I would say. But I always had a solution. I don't know if they were good, but obviously the lead was now really big, so it looks like uh, a good technical troll and speed was good. Thank you. Thank you. So Matthias Kibbert's pretty happy with his route and you can see uh, in the lead Ellen Ross going a little bit of a turn. Tape, yeah, I think she was almost heading towards the left option then decided to go to the right. It's a bit easier to execute and of course, well if you have a minute to play with, then you can take the one that's easier to execute, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. We've got some information coming through from the results system with uh, GBR1, British first team, missing a punch on the first leg, that's control 10, and Finland 2, also missing a punch on the first leg, that's control 7, which apparently is under investigation. Mm, and I mean, this was also the reason why we didn't see them in the graphics for a long yeah. time, the British team. So we did sometimes and then didn't see them, yeah. so it was quite confusing. But yeah, I think that's a disqualification for the British team and for the second Finnish team. So Eleanor Ross will just round the corner of this fence and very soon we'll get another indication of the time difference. I can also say that at the last ra TV control or radio control, we only have a gap of seven seconds between uh, Alva Sunesson and Teresa Janosikova. So it feels like a matter of time until we see the Czech Republic up there on the bronze medal spot. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see some GPS to see where those chasing teams are, which routes they're going, if they're all going the same way or not. But that is the leading team still through. And we know the gap was more than a minute. So we wait here. Can we see some runners coming through the different route choices? Let's have, oh. Oh no, uh, she didn't see the, the barrier. Yeah, but she could have had it to the south and get around anyway. Yeah. So let's Ooh, see. Oh, that's it's a about, mistake. You can see it. I mean, it's about 20 seconds she lost there. Uh, she has quite a bit to play with, though she should still be uh, second at control 12. But she was only 17 seconds ahead of Sweden 2 at control number 5, I think. It was 123 and 140. Yeah, but she sh should still be in second position here. Yeah, so this is cutting up through between these school buildings. Wonder if we can see the others yet. Oh, there, there you, you go. can see them. And they now have further to go. And you can see that. So Czech now right the Czech Republic is very close to the second position as well. Yeah, really close to the second position. And Emma Biesmo working hard. She said she kind of finally yesterday felt race 
raised fit and, and that she her body felt good after spending the whole of the last year um, figuring out how to how to treat her body she with her diabetes. She had broken hips and then she had yeah. this diabetes yeah. uh, problems and uh, very impressive run yesterday with a top 10 position, kind of her World Cup comeback. Yeah, it really was. So switching up here, you can see Yanashikova reading a map really carefully on that turning. But loads of teams still in it. We've got Finland, mm. Norway, Switzerland too. Andrina Benjamins and Marika Taney, you can just see there in the picture. Andrina Benjamins going the other way. And uh, she was 27th yesterday with some problems on the route choice. Here's Laura Robertson for New Zealand. And we've got Spain and that's disqualified British team in They've been kept in the race. Did wonder if they were going to be pulled from the race. I say because we don't have Hauswirt in this graphics either. It's true. There's Denmark. And this is, we're looking, I think, at, there we go. There's Grace Malloy not punching control 10 because she should have punched that control there and she mm -hmm. just completely missed it out here's a look at the tracking yeah you can see it doesn't go to 10 straight from 9 to 11. yeah and this is uh see when you've got common controls for everybody coming I mean, it's very a bit quickly. strange because she yeah. should notice that the others are punching control and at least you should double check the map then but maybe she was a bit ahead and didn't see them behind. yeah maybe she was looking ahead to that route choice as well hard to know but Eleanor Ross is so far ahead she's already at control 17 she's about to head towards the arena passage and it's looking really really good for the Swiss team it's the same Swiss team that won uh, at the World Games actually and uh, a lot of the team are obviously super super regulars in their sprint relay team She comes, she turns the map over in, well in advance of this uh, last control. So now it's only a very, very short loop for Elena Roos and the Swiss team. I think, I mean, we have seen the mistakes by Piesmo. Uh, it's far more than a minute now. Yeah, yep. and it's looking really comfortable for Elena Ross here and for the whole of the Swiss team. Really comfortable. She'll have gotten some information perhaps on the run through, but here is uh, Biesmo, and she is a couple of controls behind. So this is control number 16. The control just before the arena passage is control number 18. Interesting to see now where the teams behind are. Still quite the gap. More than 25 seconds before. So you see she's got this different control here. She is, and we've got to watch out for where the others are as well, because they could have gone to different four kings too, but it does look a clear second place then for Sweden at the moment. The gap is 120. So I think she's closed a bit of the gap actually mm -hmm. compared to uh, Eleanor Ross just on this last part. So Biesmo in second for the first Swedish team as a late replacement for Tova Alexanderson. Here's the third place runner and it is the Czech. Here's Jana Shikova. And lots of Czech flags being waved here in this arena because Jana Shikova is having a really great last leg. The gap is 27 seconds to the silver position. So, uh, yes, we shouldn't do any more mistakes. No, she shouldn't. It's, uh, but this last loop is very, is very, very short, though. So she really would have to make a mistake for Jana Shikova to catch her, I think. Uh, here is... Sabina Hauswirt for Switzerland too, and that's a surprise. It means I think some of the Swedish teams and Alf Sonnenson has uh, dropped back. So Switzerland too, rounding this corner. 
And we also have Norway, there's Andrina Benny Minson. We have Sweden too, I think Alva Sonnison there. Here is Marika Taney for Finland too. Uh, with they miss punch though as well. I think that's that's an under investigation though. Uh, again, a miss punch on the first leg. So there's New Zealand, Britain, Spain there as well. Then we also have another of the Swedish teams. No, Denmark and France are somewhere as well. Those four or five runners through as a little pack. And now another gap. Then we see France and Denmark still together. Cecil Calandri and we have Ida Egovic Christiansen together, these two teams. Fight for position nine. So oh, here is Elena Ross, and this is the last few controls here. Just stopping slightly. Uh, they have a different uh, control here in the very end. Uh, the course planner said they wanted to have a different control there due to the fact that you could actually see one of the last controls from the quarantine. Uh, so they wanted to kind of trick them. <laughs> <laughs> or at least don't not to give uh, away too much information. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, she's on her way down now towards the run-in, towards the last control. And this Swiss team have been pretty great running all of them. They've got time to have a little team celebration here. So Simona Abersold, Joey Haddon, Matthias Gibbert and Elena Ross are going to take the win here in Czechia. And I mean, you named it uh, before, there was a one second gap after the first leg, one second gap after the second leg, and then a minute after the third one. So a great, great run by Matthias Kibbert. Uh, I used to sp talk about the MVP of the race today. It's <laughs> definitely the uh, Matthias Kibbert who, who kind of on this route choice to control three made the difference and then just keep, kept on pushing and pushing and pushing and opened this one minute gap compared to Sweden. Yeah, that gap of of the of one minute is is pretty unheard of, to be honest. Uh, and we can see then some of the next teams. Yeah, there is a there is a sprint here. This now. is a sprint for second place. This is going to be exciting. This could get very exciting. You can see the Swedish team there are uh, waiting for Emma Biesmo to oh, come in. This is going to be so and exciting. But I think it's advantage to Jana Sikova. She's taking a more direct route out here. And she's got to be careful not to go too far to the right. Here she is. Here she comes. Where's uh, Sweden? Sweden's to on the right. right there. There's Emma Biesmo. And Czechia are going to take the silver here with a fight out on the very, very last stages. And what a fantastic run here from Dorezio Anishikova and I think from Thomas Krupter as well on the third leg. They pulled them up into a second place and she is delighted to do that on the home soil. And the BSMO is still happy with that third place and there is the Swedish team. I mean, they had a very, very tough start with Denisa Kosova having big troubles on the first leg, but then, I mean, we said it, the, the men were so strong yesterday, they kind of turned it around a bit and got Janosikova in a position where she could fight for the medals, uh, and she did that job perfectly. Yeah, here's Sweden too into uh, fourth, and Norway into fifth, we also have Switzerland too into sixth, and... Yes! Ah! Yes! <laughs> yes! Very, very happy team. Of course, they should be. Yeah, the, the comeback after the first leg. Here's Marika Taney for Finland 2, who, who uh, I think they've been disqualified for a miss punch on the first leg. So we will uh, wait and see that one. Here's Cecilia Anderson sprinting into the finish. That team also disqualified. And we've got uh, Switzerland two in there as well. Uh, Sweden, we've got Spain and we wait as well. We know Denmark and France are on the way. And uh, that's the British team in there. Really exciting to see quite a few teams close together on this sprint relay. France there into 11th. And Denmark here just a few seconds later. There, those two teams will have seen a lot of each other around these two courses. 
And then we have a little bit of a gap. Oh, we're waiting for New Zealand. I think this is Laura Robertson here. Brother sister pairing of Tim and Laura Robertson on third and fourth legs. Laura based in Scotland. And aside from the first team, really quite close here, quite exciting. Yeah, it was it was very tight, and we, we also could see like uh, changes in positions as we don't see that very often in sprint relays. Uh, now today, I mean, we had a big disadvantage for the Czech team after the first leg, um, and yeah, we had a tough fight between the Swiss team and the Swedish team on the first two leg, but then it was kind of... Why do you think that is? Down. <laughs> it's hard to say. I think it's... Uh, I mean, it, the four kings and especially that rule choice three to four, it's quite hard to see that you should go to the north if you have the F control. And there were only a few teams actually choosing that. And every time they were choosing it, they could kind of win back 10 to 15 seconds. and. That was very decisive today. I really like that route choice because it's it's hard to see, but if you see it, you win time, but it's not kind of this extreme time difference. So, I mean, it, 15 seconds once doesn't decide the competition, but if you do it twice or like three times, then of course it makes a big, big difference. Yeah, and certainly allows for those teams behind to be chopping and changing in in their position, I think, mm -hmm. really. And, I mean, today as well, you could see Emma Piesmu maybe not uh, that much experience on the last leg because you could see the, the mistake to control 12. You could, from there, you can kind of feel that she was a bit nervous. There was another mistake needed for her. You could see that this route actually to control 16 by Yanosikova running the S is a little bit faster as well. Okay, I think we're going to hear then from the winning team as we see the last loop. You can see just how close those second and third place teams were all the way around, even with different routes round to those last few controls. And ultimately, throws Yanosikova in second. And I'm here with the winning Swiss team. Congratulations, uh, Simone Abelsold. You ran the first leg, a close battle with the Saar Hagström, Sweden, for, for the lead. How did you experience the, the first leg? It was a really tough leg. It was uh, really hectic in the beginning, as there were lots of four kings. But yeah, I took my time and I also took my own route choices. I was suddenly alone after the first route choice, so I just had to trust my technique and trust my speed. So uh, in the end, made a small mistake, so it got a hard fight with uh, Sara that she won in the end. But yeah, I'm really happy with my first leg. And the fight continued on the second leg between uh, you, Joey, and Jonathan Gustafsson of, of Sweden. What was your strategy during that leg? Yeah, to stay calm, of course, it uh, felt quite uh, quiet uh, because we didn't have a lot of runners around, but still uh, the pressure of him I felt, sometimes on my back, sometimes he was a little bit in front. So yeah, it was just to get uh, secure through and uh, uh, secure a stable performance. And we'll move to Matthias. Uh, you managed to create a, a huge gap of, I think, uh, nearly 50 seconds to, to Sweden on, on the third leg. Was that on purpose, going uh, away from Sweden on the first long leg? Uh, or what? No, uh, basically it just happened. Uh, after the first scaffolding I was all alone and from there on it was basically a race on my own. Uh, yeah, of course it gave a good feeling when I realized uh, Gustav is behind me. Uh, so yeah, this motivated me to push extra hard but uh, yeah, I think I made a clean race and the uh, gap created uh, because of that. And then you, Elena, you were able to run with some calmness I suppose with the, with the huge gap Matthias created. What did that mean to your race? Yeah, it's uh, really nice to start with this uh, big gap. I knew I, I have to focus on the technique, like 50 seconds, that's really a lot in a sprint, so I can really take safe route choices and take the time on the map. And I had a really good race. Um, all, yeah, no mistakes, I took the time and then I ran also as fast as I could where I could run. And It was good to hear on the passage that I had one minute uh, lead, so on the last loop I was really focusing on the every control and uh, really nice to come to the finish in, uh, in the lead. And in, in two months there are European champs in Italy, the sprint relay as well. You see Switzerland as a favorite there now? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we are uh, the European champion in sprint relay from 2018 and from 2021, and we will try to to beat also in 2023. Thank you. Congratulations to the win today. Thanks. I mean, we have been talking about. Uh, the fight on the first leg, the fight on the second leg, but the uh, big difference Kibbutz made. But uh, I mean, uh, Elena Ruos did her job very well as well, because uh, we have seen Biesmo. She had kind of a similar situation uh, when it came to that she could defend the second position. Uh, but she did the job not as well as, as uh, Elena Ruos did. She did it perfectly. She played with the time. She took some extra time to read the map, to be safe. You could hear it. And then on the last loop, uh, she could kind of enjoy it as well. Yeah, uh, from w really what I took from hearing both the women talk there is that you it, taking time to plan their route choices. And Simona Abersold, from the beginning, going different ways uh, compared to Sarah Hagström was, was really... Uh, really decisive, I think, as well, and really showed that actually, you know, compared to other sprint relays, I think this was quite technically difficult, and you know, it wasn't all about kind of the phys it wasn't all about the physicality. Certainly, the physicality played a big part in Switzerland and Sweden having a kind of a big gap at the beginning. But you had to be so strong in your own. Team. Yeah, and I mean, it was a kind of this. Um, even though it was different terrain, it was kind of the same pattern we have seen in this sprint today as we've seen yesterday. Mm. Uh, very busy start, uh, not a, a lot of time to prepare the long route choice, uh, same as yesterday basically. Uh, and then you have to make a decision which is quite important for the competition. And before every long route here you always got the small controls, many of the small controls, in order to not let you prepare the, the route choice. And I think today this made a very big difference between the teams, how good they could handle that situation. Yeah, so many controls close together and really getting a sense of what the, the core setters, the course planners are, are after, the, the challenges that they're setting for the teams and what you really have to do well in order to achieve. And really those, all four of the Swiss runners putting together fantastic races to end up in that winning position. And really, really great runs from, from the last few uh, Czech uh, runners as well to get them up into that silver. I'm sure they are going to be celebrating tonight ahead of rest day tomorrow. And we will hold then the flower ceremony to celebrate the top three teams. Here they go. Přivítal i tři zácné hosty, jejíme ministr dopravy, pan Martin Kupka, první náměstek ministrně obrany, František Šouc a také náměstek hejtmana Libereckého kraje. So we start with the third place team, the team then of Sweden. And so close to the lead for so much of that relay for losing the tails of Switzerland on leg three. And Emma Biesmo just unlucky at the end, making a small mistake. Actually, no, not a small, quite a big mistake to number 12. But they are rewarded still with a medal position. Sada Hagström, Jonathan Gustafsson, Gustav Bergman, and Emma Biesmo. And the second team have a big cheer, of course. Wait, and that was almost an accident for the other team. But Denise Kosova, Jakub Glonek, Thomas Krivda, and Teresa Janashikova, they are the silver medalists. Again, we, we counted them as uh, one of our favorites for the bronze medals. Uh, wasn't necessarily expecting them to get the silver medal, but really a uh, strong running for them. You can say it's just been time coming. But the complete performance today came from the Swiss team. And that one minute, a whole minute gap that Matthias Kibert managed to create uh, on the third leg really did it for them, but super, super solid technical, physical, navigational performances from the four of them, Simona Abersold, Joey Haddon, Matthias Kibbert and Eleanor Ross. I'm sure there'll be lots of uh, 
analysis now for, for the rest of the evening, looking at all these route choices, looking at all the four kings and how they differed and what was the best way to go and, and kind of what happened between all the different teams because there's certainly going to be uh, yeah, lots of interesting route choices to discuss this afternoon. So that's it for the two sprint races then that we've got here in Cheskalipa and the competition moves a little bit further south for the rest of the World Cup round two. We move further south to uh, the forest for Saturday and Sunday and some of uh, these limestone cliffs that have been very typical for those running the World Championships a couple of years ago. It's going to be very exciting. So we will see you back then for the middle and the long distance at the weekend. See you then.